Hello. Have you ever wanted to kill your hotter sister? Well, then have I got a movie for you. Morgiana is a 1972 Czechoslovakian film by director Juraš Hertz. It's about twin sisters, Clara and Victoria. Clara is sweet, amiable, pure, vastly ignorant to the outside world. And Victoria is cynical, suspicious, cowardly, and corrupt. So naturally, they're played by the same actress. When their father dies, uh, Victoria gets the jewels, and <laughs> Clara inherits the whole estate. Obviously, this doesn't sit well with Victoria, and so she does what any, any normal slighted sister would do. She plots to kill Clara. If all that sounds interesting to you, let's check out Morgiana. By the way, if you're interested to know wh who Morgiana is in all of this... And before we begin... Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. I love these movies beginning with the funeral. This is odd conflation of, uh, it's, it's like the tarot card of death. Death represents transformation or opportunity. Se všemi pozemky a zařízeními, zejména se všemi šperky a cenost. Všechen svůj ostatní majetek pak odkazují své mladší dceři Kláře. Clad in darkness and despair, Morgiana. Jaroslav Kusera. I think of all of the Czechs, Yaroslav Kusera has been the most featured on this channel. I think he's filmed, he lensed every single movie, Czech movie, that I feature on this channel. Cassandra Cat, Mala Morskavia, Vila. I haven't showcased it on this channel, but I. He, Diamonds of the Night, obviously. Or Daisies, obviously. We see so many reflections in on this channel, but this is most reminding me of um, Funeral Parade of Roses. As it would any sibling. Man, the Czech are really into, like, the extreme eye makeup in this period. This is characterizing Clara as a bat. It's using the like a fish eyed lens to give the appearance of an animal. Okay, so Morgiana is the cat. I thought the cat's name was Gerda, actually. I'm trying to think of other Czech films that I've seen that has double casting. I, th I guess to a certain degree, uh, Valerie in Our Week of Wonders. But it's like an interesting use of these kind of act of these actresses or these actors' abilities uh, to show the kind of duality of the human spirit. Olizovat to nesmíš. Stejně nic neucítíš. Jen bys pomalu usínala, až bys usínala vždycky. To kill her sister. Nice. A nikdo by nevěděl proč. I do like in some ways to reflect also, that's also reflected in the camera work that's supposed to signify the cat, Morgiana. Um, this camera work, this like framing that's like more like voyeuristic, it's more like surveillance. A camera that's reflecting a mentality of constantly observing, of watching people within your lives, of surveilling them. 
Yeah, a lot of mirror presentations in this. Myslela jsem, že už si vzhůru. Vicky, nasnídej se se mnou. Děkuji, už jsem jedla. I wonder how they did that. I mean, I guess they split the screen because you don't actually see her go into the, the reflection that has uh, Clara in it. Time to poison. And Morgiana watches it all. It's very interesting. Different levels of like voyeur voyeurism or surveillance that are happening. We watch... Victoria watch her sister. We watch uh, Morgiana watch them all. And capturing um, little trespasses, little sins in mirrors. I'm guessing they did this split screen too, but it's creating a nice kind of like De Palma shot, the split diopter. It's not a real split diopter, but... <laughs> In one go? Yeah, it's a really cool way that, um, that, um, whew, it's the director's name, um, Hertz and uh, Kusera have chosen to uh, shoot this movie from. A distance that's like feels like uh like an insect on a wall like a fly on the wall like somebody like capturing these events incognito that kind of swivel pan that's that the camera has it gives a little bit of like uh a feeling of motion and but also like a feeling of um like agency or autonomy like the camera is alive that it's tracking these events rather than just um depicting them <laughs> These really weird warped, like wide-angle lenses. Don't test it out on that little boy. That's weird. Why would you do that? Oh, on the dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a heel arc right there. Is she going to turn her into a fucking vampire? Is that where this is going? And she won't be able to see her reflection anymore. That is if this follows the convention, the vampire conventions of like what we know in America. Again, some Shavalsky. He looks like just like a guy I know, right down to the mutton chops. I have to say, in terms of pointing out like the differences, this what are the like highlights or lowlights of different like film stocks that different countries use, um, and maybe it's to do with the wigs or whatever. But the hair is captured beautifully, and whatever the Czechs are using at this time. I just noticed it for the blondes in the garden, but I, I, I think something similar for uh, Clara's wig as well. You can like actually see every reflection and every detail in them. Ooh, and it's a version of Clara that's wearing the red. The red that um, that is signature to Victoria. Victoria wears red and black, and uh, Clara wears, I guess, white and white and yellow? And the way the camera shoots um, Clara as a subject is actually a lot more neutral than the way it shoots Victoria. Like, we talked about how the camera takes on a more voyeuristic approach with, uh, with Victoria, and especially with Morgiana. But here in the shots with um, with the shots of Clara, where she's not particularly observant, things are kind of just happening to her, pretty static and neutral, and doesn't move around a lot, and um, keeps like it keeps a more like split the difference kind of distance on its subjects, like it's 
close-ups aren't as extreme as Victoria's, but its wider shots also aren't as blown out and distant as Victoria's. Zase se zapomněla na okno. Promiňte, prosím. Necháváme je po otevřené kvůli kočičce. I wonder if um, Clara's gonna come in through the window. She came in through the bathroom window. Like everything involved with Victoria's about uh, voyeurism. It's cool. It's cool that they've actually filmed it in two different styles to exaggerate different features of the same actress playing different roles. <laughs> Kushan is a really good filmmaker, I have to say. He's He employs really different styles in the different films that he shoots. Like, there's really different ideas that are presented, but they're all really cool ideas in the films that he shot. Like, the differences between this and, like, Diamonds of the Night, especially. Diamonds of the Night is one of the most brilliantly shot films I've ever seen. Um, to Cassandra Cat, which is pretty neutral in its own way, but has really colorful and ostentatious, like, uh, set pieces. Even something like The Little Mermaid, which is more staid in its approach. Um, still like portrays like a point of view. There's like these really kind of languid <laughs> like this like um, over cranked shots that emphasize this kind of dreaminess this ethereal quality. There's an instance of a Czech film that I think captures the human face beautifully like very distinctly. Um, the way that Kusher captured uh, the little mermaid's face in that um Miroslava Safrankova. She was beautiful in that movie. It's almost like you could tell which story is being told by the way the camera acts. I mean, most extremely, you can tell when Morgiana's uh, perspective is being shown. But I actually do wonder if there's going to be a transformation that happens in the way that Clara's story is presented. If Clara is to undergo a certain kind of transformation. <laughs> Czech countryside. Beautiful. They shot they shot Malamorska Villa a couple years after this. Right here at the same location. That's not a fact. That's just me postulating. This extreme wide-angle lens for Victoria. It's just hilarious. Girl's got some things going on in her head. She, like, can't bear the happiness of anybody else. <laughs> Truly relatable. Oh my god, that'll actually kill her! Don't- what the fuck? Victoria, are you okay? Not a care in the world. <laughs> yeah, Victoria, you're not a great person. I have to say, Kushara does beautiful work in terms of a, con uh, a subjective lens. Uh, wait, like, two years for fucking YouTube essays to come out with something about Kushara. They're gonna fucking rock your world. I mean, blackmail's a much less... <laughs> serious crime than what you committed. <laughs> See what I mean about the, like the wide shots being like co a little bit cold or a little bit like just a little bit menacing like staying on that low angle. <laughs> It's practical, because she was in a seated position and then she got up. But the camera, like, I don't know, it takes, it, 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 it imparts a point of view really brilliantly. 
So is she going to end up selling her entire inheritance to try and cover up this crime? It feels like flirting to me. Girls know how to flirt. And they flirt through threatening each other. Nakonec jsem ho radši zakopala tady, nedaleko domu, ve skalách. She's gonna toss her over the rocks. Děkuji moc krát za peníze. To je maličkost. Brzy se uzdravte. It's a shame they have to kill each other. They could have just had hot sex. This is dating in your 20s. Ooh, her hand actually moved. That's cool. They actually got the actress in there. That seems kind of dangerous. I don't know. Choppy waters. She's so dumb. What a dumb baby face. She's been searching on WebMD too much. Okay, so she's just seeing the crime that's being committed that has been committed against her through I I don't know sister powers through the powers of God through the powers of trauma narrative tension uh, whatever. Just some really beautiful camera ideas in this movie. Nothing to the level of Diamonds of the Night or Daisies, I guess. Obviously, but um. Stuff that really is servicing the story, telling a particular tale. And also in its own way, just like weird kind of check new wave psychedelia. Okay, so this is an instance where I'd say like the cinematography of uh, of Clara's perspective has opened up a little. Now that she's like on the precipice of death, she's seeing things a little bit more in an exaggerated fashion. Yeah, I'm glad of I wonder why she keeps on seeing the apparition of herself in Victoria's colors. You see how the, the different way this is cut and the different way that this is shot? Like, it doesn't feel as much as that it's from Clara's perspective. It more The camera more treats Clara as a subject. And in the Victoria sections, there's this interesting fusion of... Uh, Victoria as a subject and the observer. <laughs> Nothing beats a pale ghost. Anything else? Want anything else you want to do in your movie? Nothing's ever going to beat a white face. Yeah, Victoria is just like this hot and bothered lesbian, just always has ladies on the mind. Self-hating lesbian. Je mnoho různých nemocí, ve kterých se lékaři ještě nevyznají. Dovolíte? I love the pout that this actress has given to Victoria. It's so funny. She's just constantly upset with everything around her. Like she this actress, I'm sorry, what is her name? Eva Yancharova. Um, she like actually gives different like face shapes to the two characters. She downturns her lips for Victoria, and she has like a constant riddled smile, like the muse smile on Clara. Takových kytic dostává slečna hodně, že? Nejhorší muž můžeme vyhodit ty od pana notáře Glenara. The fuck is up with this nurse? Domnívám se, že ji milujete. Nevím, co to má společného s její nemocí. Ale děte, ovšem, že nic. Marku. Mohu vám tak říkat. 
I love this, that this um, narrative of the jealous sister plays out even after she's poisoned Clara, that she's jealous of all these other aspects of Clara's life, that Clara has suitors, that Clara has people that are um, doting after her, that are caring for her, and Victoria is surrounded by people and none of them are clamoring for her affection, all of them are turning their eyes away. There's an interesting, I don't really know what the metaphor is, but there's an interesting comparison that's being drawn of card, of card play. Like two different manifestations of fate, uh, one through prophecy and one through gambling. All of a sudden we're watching a De Palma film. Why is this movie called Morgiana? Oh! <clears throat> Okay, so the question is, is it the ghost of the um, chemist? Is the chemist actually still alive? Or is it uh, the side of Victoria who's experiencing guilt? I love these inserts of the act. That's so beautifully realized. It's Hitchcockian. Glenner again? What is up with these, this suitor's story? I'm actually wondering where this suitor story is heading. Um, I, I, I mean, it's heading towards a marriage, and I wonder if that's a fulfillment of the prophecy that um, Victoria had in her reading, that the uh, the reading was actually for her sister and not for herself, or the desired outcome was actually for her sister and not for herself. Oh no, this is all your fault. <laughs> Is that a tattoo of Ray's Mysterio's mask? It's weird that they're wear they're all wearing Victoria's dominant colors. I don't like the suggestion that's making about Victoria. This is an interesting kind of proxy scene because uh, uh, Victoria has been shown to, I don't know if it's directly with the officer, but um, this seems kind of like a, a surrogate of the emotions that Victoria feels, that um, this kind of jealousy towards, uh, towards Clara is being played out with these characters that are reflective of certain attitudes of Victoria's. But I see, I don't like that connection because it's making implications about Victoria's character that I don't really think need to be made because she's already a killer. You don't need to uh, suggest that she's also sexually frivolous as well. I love hearing Pravda in these uh, like Slavic language Films. God, Clara is such a white meat baby face. I really would prefer she did something for herself over the course of this movie. But I understand it's not necessarily that kind of narrative. <laughs> It's become the Lorjan ending. It's everybody watching. It's an interesting dichotomy as well, though, that um, Victoria has this jealousy over Clara because Clara is ostensibly the, the good one, the nice one. And the way that manifests is that Clara is the center of attention that everybody loves and admires and looks to Clara. And so 
conceptually that would be the thing that uh, Victoria is jealous of. She's not really jealous of the money. She's not really jealous of the um, the furnishings. She's jealous of the affections and the tension that uh, Clara gets that's signified by the inheritance. And so this character that hides in the shadows, that craves her secrecy and craves her guardedness, actually like wants the light to a certain degree. And the irony, the dramatic irony of the conclusion of this is that she's gonna get what she asked for, that by the end of this, everybody's gonna be paying attention to her. Oh, she's alive. There's there's nothing in it for you now. You really just gotta get rid of her. This is the question when you're the ugly ugly lesbian sister. Who do you hate more? Your sister or your ex? Like if Clara had the littlest hint of like, I don't know, sexual exploration or something becoming more open to what she wants or what her desires are in the midst of this panic. That's that's just something a little bit more that I would want out of this cuz as it is because it's so fairy taleish cuz it's so uh, fabulistic just for my taste it's telling a kind of a conservative story. <laughs> Neviděl jste tu nějakou dívku? There's this kind of like undercurrent of uh, idleness that has been running through the second half of this movie. That characters are blind because they're too busy playing, too busy drinking, too busy um, pursuing sexual interests. I do wonder what that's all about. What the fuck? Řeknu to u soudu. A když budete mít štěstí, tak zjistí, že jste duševně chorá. Kdybyste byla voják. Oh, I love this. Ale na to jste zřejmě příliš zbabila. She is a coward, I guess. Times run out for you, bitch. Girl, that is not gonna hold. It needs to have it just so. Why is the vase being included in this? So that somebody will come to get her? Because she's giving the appearance of trying to attempt suicide. <laughs> Victoria is a bit hilarious. She doesn't actually want to die. She just wants people to think that she's uh, suicidal. Kam jste zahrabali kočku? Nevím. Asi správce vyhodil na smetiště. Victoria is hilarious. Okay, I didn't recognize this side of her. I I'm beginning to like this a bit more. If we're gonna fo focus on her cowardice, we might as well make it comedic. Yes, take off the wig. Oh. Disgusting. I don't mean that as a value judgment on the actress or her appearance. I mean that as a character revelation of, of, of Victoria. Is she gonna be ignored? Is that what's gonna happen at the end of this? Oh, they let in the cat. Slečna Tranganová dnes v noci zemřela. Tranganová? Tranganová? To není možné. Ten jed přece nezabíjí. Zemřela starší sestra Viktorie. Kdo volá, prosím? 
<laughs> Bye. Have a good journey. A jak je vůbec možné, že alkohol dokázal zahnat takovou otravu? Samozřejmě, že. Oh, because she drank with the drunkard. That's funny. That's weird. This turned out to be. <laughs> this turned out to be more um, comedic at the end, like more Agatha Christie. Uh, it like tied up all its loose ends in a way that's like very pleasurable, but it's not in the same kind of dark, twisted bent that the first half of this film was establishing for me. Yo, your servant actually loved you. The one whose fucking neck you broke? She was actually into you. Okay, so this wasn't like the more kind of like serious or ponderous film that I was kind of expecting it to be. Uh, I was expecting it to have dark overtones, be a little bit more... Uh, how shall we say it? A little bit more allegorical, uh, like connecting to something or making... Uh, connections to something it may well do but by the end of this i was like this is like a well-told story that has like um emotional impact more so to it and it has like set it's it's about having a satisfying experience um i didn't really realize that this was going to be a full-blown comedy by the end and i won't I, I i say that with a bit of reservation obviously it's not like comedy in the way that uh anchorman is a comedy but it's a comedy in the way that an Agatha Christie uh, mystery to a degree is a comedy that Knives Out is a comedy that uh, it reestablishes order in such a chaotic world and the perfection, the linearity, the steadfastness of that reassertion of order is satisfying and almost comedic and is a relief. Um, so I don't usually associate like messages with comedic films or with, uh, satisfying films. And that might just be a blind spot to me, um, because I can't really easily identify the like themes or messages of this movie other than to say, you know, evil people are evil and you shouldn't kill your sister. And, you know, the desire for money is actually a bad thing. Um, but yeah, this this by the end felt like a more so like a well told fun story. Yeah, that was Morgiana. Uh, interesting work. I'm interested to check out some of Yurach, um, some of Hertz's other stuff. I've been gunning for a while to check out uh, Beauty, his version of Beauty and the Beast on this channel. We'll get to it eventually, but I have been checking out too many Czech films on this channel, uh, so we'll space it out a little bit. And yeah, that was Morgiana. I don't know why it's called Morgiana, but I did love the performances, the performance by Eva um, Yancharova. Uh, she was great. An amazing performance, and uh, it turns out a com comedic performance as well. And beautiful, beautiful cinematography by Kushara. Uh, check it out. In the meantime, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time. Keep watching good movies.